Look how far the car is behind me, keeping up with me at a good pace. Look how far we are from the cars in front of us, keeping up at a good pace. So we're driving to the flow of traffic, and that's what that five mile an hour over buffer gives us. So again, great job Tesla on that one. Five miles an hour over makes this a much more usable system. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. We're back with the latest update 2020.28.5. This is an iterative improvement to a previous release 2020.28.2, and it's got all sorts of things depending on your vehicle configuration and location. Okay, so let's dive right into it. First things, the most important thing, and that is the traffic light and stop sign control, uh, giving you the ability to now have a five mile an hour over increase to your speed. Uh, this makes it a lot easier and a lot more comfortable to drive. Obviously, we know the speed limit is the speed limit. Everyone should adhere to that. But giving that five mile an hour over accounts for the human error, the human issue where people typically drive over the speed limit a little bit faster and make it uncomfortable uh, in the previous iteration for you to drive with this autopilot with traffic light control on local roads. So this looks to make that a lot better just by giving you that little bit of a buffer. And this works typically if you have the uh, mile an hour buffer in the menu. So if you go to the menu, go to autopilot uh, and you'll see that you can typically put together an offset of speed. And you can say, hey, I want to be five miles an hour over or I want to be 10 miles an hour over. OK, so I'll go, I'll go to five miles an hour over uh, just to make that available. If you don't have this setting set up. Uh, it will just stick to the actual speed limit. But if you have a five mile an hour offset, it'll go to five mile an hour over. If you have a 10 mile an hour offset, it will default again to five mile an hour over on local roads, ones that Tesla has mapped and deemed as local roads. So let's take a look at that right now. Merging on now, activating now. Okay. And my offset hasn't kicked in yet. It's, it's now going 35 miles an hour over. I'm gonna just force the issue here and go 40. Now I can go 40. And as you see, the cars beforehand were sort of passing me or going further away from me. Now uh, I'm catching up and moving to the speed of traffic, the flow of traffic, which is great, which is what this is intended for. I'm gonna keep my hands off the wheel because people like to complain and ask questions why I don't keep my hands on the wheel. You'll see the system wanting me to be compliant and have my hands on the wheel. Uh, but I want to just show you what it looks like uh, when I don't do that. Okay, so I have both my hands here, ready to take over at a moment's notice. But this speed right here, just five miles an hour over here, it asks me to put my hands on the wheel. Uh, this speed, f five miles an hour over, feels much more natural to the way that humans drive. Not the way that we're supposed to drive, not the way that a computer or an autonomous car should drive, but it just feels more natural to the way that humans drive. And I think in this stage where we're the extreme minority in terms of the cars on the road, this is the way that it should behave and be more natural like the cars that you see around you. Okay, I'm gonna confirm here using the stalk, just to let it know that I'm gonna come up ac across an intersection or a stoplight, and it's gonna proceed accordingly, same as before, proceeding if there's a car in front of me, proceeding through the green light without having to confirm. All right, green light comes up here. Pedestrian animation is still there, more so walking than running, but still good nonetheless. And now we proceed. It's asking me to confirm, but it knows cars are ahead of me. It knows the light is green, so it should proceed as normal. Acceleration seems pretty good as well. Uh, it used to be a little bit hesitant uh, coming from a stop. Put my hand on the wheel again, just to make it compliant and uh, pretty much I'll, I'll stay just like this and see what happens, see what the car does. Driving at a decent speed like this, sort of under the speed limit per traffic is fine. It's always been good in that regard. What we're looking at here specifically is the ability for it to drive five miles an hour over, particularly when the flow of traffic is driving at that speed. I have cars behind me. I'll throw the rear camera up just so you guys can see that.
And I can put the full camera up if you want, if you want to see the sides as well, just to get a sense of how well the car is doing centering in the lane. But again, just the ability to go over the speed limit one mile, two mile, but five miles specifically over just makes the driving experience that much better. Or I guess I should say the riding experience. Coming up to a stoplight. Very good. Now the speed limit dropped to 30 in this particular zone. And so the car now reverts to 35 miles an hour as the maximum speed that it can go. And again, based on how the cars are driving, which is pretty crazy at the moment because this car seems to be hanging off the road. But again, that's the human condition. That's the human driver for you. Uh, this is doing pretty well keeping up with this. Now look at this, 35 miles an hour over. Look how far the car is behind me, keeping up with me at a good pace. Look how far we are from the cars in front of us, keeping up at a good pace. So we're driving to the flow of traffic, and that's what that five mile an hour over buffer gives us. So again, great job Tesla on that one. Five miles an hour over makes this a much more usable system. Goes back up to 35 miles an hour. 40 mile an hour as the maximum with that five mile an hour over offset coming up to a light i'm not going to press anything right now steep curve here I'm not going to press anything it'll proceed through normally don't have to confirm or anything because the car is in front of me i will comply to make sure the car, the car stays calm and make sure that i'm here now it's restricted to 30 because the speed limit is now 25 and here is really where the use case is for the five mile an hour over difference at this speed people typically never drive 25 miles an hour on a main road like this so to be able to go 30 miles an hour over just makes this really really usable now as opposed to what it was before where it was barely usable because it would slow down so much and so drastically it would startle the people behind us and make traffic build up behind us so this is really good all right now we're going to go through a more dense area with some stop signs and some traffic and some other air, some other impediments and see how the car does. Trucks to the side. I'll engage here, sort of see what it does. So here's where five mile an hour over isn't the greatest just cause it's going too fast and there's a lot of unknown elements like trucks and things like that. So maybe around here you wanna manually adjust it or maybe not even use it at all. Uh, but as I come up here to this particular area, um, I can go straight and when I go straight, I can engage here and go to the stop sign. So here I'll engage five miles an hour over stopping for stop control, stopping for traffic control with the stop sign. This is an always stop. So you have to use your due diligence and negotiation skills. I'll resume. It continues. Coming up to a light that's turning yellow. Just going to pull it a little bit just because I get a little too close to that car. And that's exactly what I meant when I said it doesn't really recognize the car. So that's still an issue. I'm pulling a little bit. It got a little too close to the car, didn't like that. And again, that's the area of improvement. So Tesla, we need to work on that. Um, being able to draw the line when it sees parked cars. If it sees parked cars, it should draw a lane line that is uh, outside of where that car exists. That's not a drivable path. So we got a little bit too close to that or maybe increase the buffer uh, on that as well. Got a little too close, freaked out, put on the brakes, and uh, not a pleasant experience. Again, heading straight towards this car, doesn't really want to turn. So these are circumstances where, I want to disengage, um, where it's not great, still needs to get better on these types of roads, where you have a double lane road with no right uh, lane marking, and just park cars as the indicators. Okay, so that's where it needs to improve. But if there is a line there, it works incredibly well and the five mile an hour offset makes it a lot more bearable uh, to be able to ride in 
in that regard. But again, some work done needs needs to be done here. Some of the the issues are still the same issues. It still does double breaking where it comes up to a light, starts to break a little bit, accelerates, and then breaks again for the final stop of the light. Again, little small tweaks here and there that can be improved over time. Not really concerned about that. I think the real issue is just being able to draw those lane lines uh, and be cognizant and aware of parked cars where there is no right lane marking. Or in other countries, it might be the opposite, left lane marking. Okay? So right here, it does a pretty good job of drawing that lane line that I talked about, where it sort of recognizes that a, or extrapolates where a lane line should be, keeping aware, keeping uh, present of the actual parked cars. Watch this, I'll activate this here, see what happens. Okay. Still kind of close, still kind of close. And you see the line kind of trying to figure itself out. So that, that still needs work. All right, we're gonna show the difference between um, not having a lane line to having a lane line. So I'll activate here, see what happens. Got the offset going, nice little turn here. A new sign, I didn't see that sign before. It said stopping for some kind of control. Makes this nice gnarly turn. I'm not gonna touch it, just keep keeping ready. Okay, now it finds the lane line, that right lane line. It finds it, and now it's ready to go. Now it's ready to go, and it stays quite centered. So if parked cars were over there, shouldn't be an issue because it used that lane line to, to get that division. But when there isn't a lane line like it is now, now it starts, to, it starts to drift, and it loses its ability to draw a proper lane line. Instead, it tries to center you in the lane, and if cars are there, it kind of makes the decision at the last minute as to where to go. Now this is kind of cool because it sees that car and it kind of drifts and follows this car, which is probably also a best practice that uh, Tesla should do is, is start to follow certain cars depending on the trajectory of where it predicts it's going to go uh, in terms of going straight or turning. Again, recognizing that car has a turn signal on, making sure that it's, uh, it's able to see that and then follow the car that's going straight, okay? Again, good, but not good. Here come parked cars. We're gonna get into a weird situation. So I'm gonna take over here because we're getting kind of close. All right, I'm gonna hold on a little bit. And then it drifts back into the middle of the lane line. Again, shouldn't do that. Should maintain that lane line or even just get closer to the double line uh, just to be on the safe side. Okay, that was pretty cool. That was pretty awesome. Thanks Tesla for making that update, listening to us and other owners uh, give you feedback on the usability of it. It's much more usable now. Super happy that it's in the position that it is now. And I, I think I'll use it a lot more on local roads. All right, so the next update we have is suspension improvement. This just basically says that the, the maximum allowed uh, ride height or gr for ground clearance uh, on high and very high has been reduced. So as high as it would go before in terms of the suspension, jumping into it right here, in terms of high and very high, has now been lowered a little bit uh, to increase ride comfort. So that's just what that says right there. All right. In addition to this, in terms of us, we've got the new language support for Polish. So we ha now have the ability to show the vehicle UI uh, in the Polish language which is great for those that speak that language, either in the US or even abroad. Uh, so that's awesome there. So that's all that we got in terms of this release. Now let's take a look at uh, some other features that other people have gotten. We're gonna jump on over to our, our good friends at Tesla Scope who have all the updates, give all the details and log all the data here. And we'll take a look at this update and what this provides for other people that have different car configurations in different locations, okay? So first and foremost, you have Sirius XM improvements. Those who still have Sirius XM, they've revamped the UI to make it a little bit cleaner, a little bit more user-friendly. So that's great, okay? I, I talked about traffic light and stop sign control. Uh, for those that have the Raven setup, if you have a Raven car, that, has, that means you have the dual motors, which is the permanent magnet motor in the front. Uh, that means that you have the Raven drive unit, so to speak. Okay, so these get supercharger improvements for V3 supercharging for Model S and Model X across the globe uh, with a new peak rates of 250 kilowatts uh, in terms of your ability to charge as fast as possible. So not quite the highest in terms of Model 3 and Model Y, but still pretty high and higher than other non-Raven Model S and Model X cars. So that's pretty cool. All right. So also for the Model S and X with the Raven setup, you also have uh, increased range display. So efficiencies in the motor and maybe even potentially the battery pack have allowed uh, Tesla to be able to increase your range, if for nothing else, superficially on the, on the actual display. 
that also applies to Model Y. A lot of this, this update typically was for Model Y. As we talk about Model Y, we talk about passenger face vents uh, for the ability for the, uh, the, the vents in the uh, HVAC system to turn off if it doesn't sense uh, a passenger. So on the passenger side seat, those vents will turn off if it does not sense a passenger in the seat to allow for efficiency, okay? Again, sus suspension improvements I already talked about, and then Tesla Arcade. Unfortunately, those people in China are gonna lose Tesla Arcade because of regulatory issues. So bye-bye to Tesla Arcade if you have a, t a Tesla in China. All right, so that's pretty much it. Those are all the updates that we've observed. Let us know if we missed anything. Let us know what your thoughts are on this update. If you think that the now auto steer slash autopilot on local roads is any better, more usable to you, let us know in the comments. Until the next time, enjoy your day, enjoy your Tesla.